Hey, you guys. Guess where I am. I just got my dream car. I got it two days ago and I've been driving all over the city because I'm so excited about this car. I've had this car on my vision board. Well, I've had a Tesla on my vision board for the past, like, I don't know, four years, three years or something like that. And I finally got it. Ah! I'll talk a little bit more about it later on. Um, we're in downtown LA right now. We're in Chinatown because I got invited to this pop-up um, it's like an Asian food pop-up. They'll probably explain it more to me when I get there, but um, we're gonna taste some really good food. And um, I'll leave all of the information for this pop-up in the description box down below. I'm not sure if it's like by appointment only. I don't know if it's like an event on a single day. I have actually no idea, but um, I will get that information for you guys right now. But hey mom, how do you feel to be in a Tesla? Um, it's always good to be a passenger, you know? Tesla. My, my brother got a Tesla first and once he got that car and I drove in it and I rode in it I was like yep, I want it this is what I want <laughs> <laughs> ah, okay well I'll catch you guys um, later on <laughs> a little bit of this with that and you know it's like a whole situation. All right, so we are at Amboy in Chinatown. So we got some fries. I'm excited. Look how crispy these are. Oh, I'm so excited. And then oh, this is going to be messy. You can just get in here. <laughs> we got the grizzly and then the get it. DH the one that we got? Yeah. Let's try it. Put your hand in. Let's see if we can get it. <laughs> You're just taking it out. I'll take this one out because it's smaller. <laughs> oh, this looks good. Hell yeah. Oh, this is going to be so good. You can tell by the cheese. Yes. All right. And it's toasted. Let's get to work. <laughs> <laughs> so. This thing's heavy. <laughs> Wait. Look at that. Unbelievable. Look at the size difference. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, when people say that there's no culture in LA, they don't know what they're talking about. It's because they stay exclusively in West Hollywood. Just in this plaza alone, there's Chinese, Vietnamese, Filipino, there's like a million different languages spoken just in this plaza. <laughs> know what you're talking about. All right, y'all, so this is what I got. We went to explore Chinatown. Um, you saw a little montage of that, and we went to this place called La Rulu, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, and we got a couple of desserts. La Rulu. La Rulu. 
And they call these thickies, <laughs> which is like a cookie, but it's thick. That's why it says, we like them thick, you know what I'm saying? So I got the Funfetti one. And this one is called the Yeehaw. So, you know, I just had to get it, obviously. It's the Yeehaw agenda. And then we also got two pies. Um, oh, it has a sticker on it. So we have, I forgot what this is called, but it, has, it comes with meringues. You're supposed to crush it on top. And then this one, I also forgot the name of. <laughs> mm, I forgot what's in both of these, but they look delicious, so we got them. <laughs> I went ahead and got one of these. Um, I don't know what the actual name of these is called, but it's like the rice patty, like farmer hats from Southeast Asia. We have something similar in the Philippines. It's not the same shape, but it's like really similar. Um, and I just like these better than regular or like Western sun hats because these fit my head better. Um, just because like on sun hats, there's like a, a place where you put your head and then it's like a floppy like thing. <laughs> my terminology today is terrible, but, um, I have a really small head and so sun hats like kind of obstruct my vision because they go like really low because I just have a small head. <laughs> um, so I really like these um, because they don't like go too low. So yeah. <laughs> and then as we were walking around Chinatown, I also found these bowls. Look how cool these are. Look at this. It's a dragon. I love dragons, y'all know that. But I also got a black one. Very, very nice. Anyway, yeah, I'm in my Hello Kitty pajamas. <laughs> and now I'm going to try probably one quarter of this thicky. Wow, okay, I just realized that I was filming everything on the wrong color balance setting. So we're back to normal, girls. <laughs> Ooh, it's a lot softer than I thought it was gonna be. It does. It's thick. Mmm. Mmm. -hmm. So good. This place is in Chinatown. Um, if you guys are familiar with Chinatown, it's in that same plaza where Howlin' Rays is. I'll leave the address in all of uh, their Instagram and stuff in the description box down below. Um, I have been trying Pharrell's um, skincare line for about a week now um, called Human Race. I really like the exfoliator so far. Um, it comes in like this little pump thing. So you just do like that and then it's a wash off exfoliator, which I really like because most of the exfoliators that I use are like leave on, but I really like that this one is a, a wash off one. It contains 8% glycolic acid. And after every use, my skin feels so smooth. I'm gonna do a full review on it um, when I have a little bit more experience with it, but I really like it so far. Man, these masks are making me break out, man. Like two pimples under the skin right here. But we're gonna fix that today. Okay, I'm gonna wash this off real quick. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> now we're gonna address these two pimples that are under the skin. These are my favorite. I don't know if you can see that, but it's by Zitsticka. It's the Spot Clarifying Patch Kit. Um, they have like two pimple patches. The other one that they have is the Goo Getter, but this one is for um, pimples that have already come to a head. These two are under the skin. I can feel it under the skin. So we're gonna use these ones and it's like a two-step system. So it has these like pads that you're supposed to use to clear. It's like a clarifying wipe, I guess. I guess to prep the skin for the main event. Yeah, it has salicylic acid, tea tree oil, vitamin E, and alcohol. So it's really just to prep the skin. And then now I'm gonna take the actual 
patch and this is a micro dart patch so you'll see it has like little spikes on it you see that so I'm gonna put one here bloop and then I'm gonna open another one boom okay now this is the human race we call it a humidifying cream and this has hyaluronic acid in it i really like the texture of this stuff i have oily skin and um it doesn't feel greasy which is like really important for me um but it does properly hydrate and moisturize the skin it feels really good i love the texture of this thing and what's interesting is that it feels it's not a gel cream um, it's definitely not a gel cream. It's definitely like a, a cream, but it doesn't feel heavy on the skin. I don't know how they formulated this, but it's literally a, like a cream, like a thick cream. It kind of reminds me of the texture of the, the CeraVe moisturizer, the one that comes in the tub. That's kind of what the texture reminds me of, but the CeraVe one, is, it feels really thick on the skin, um, which is fine, like if you had dry skin, but this one doesn't feel thick at all and it doesn't make my skin greasy. Okay, I don't even know if I'm in frame or not, um, but I just got a little mount for my camera. So now I can vlog in my Tessie. I don't even know what you guys can see right now because I literally can't see the screen. SUV now so I'm like a lot higher up than normal <laughs> Alright girl, so now um, I got a lot of really cute things from and other stories. Um, I'm probably not going to show you this in this vlog because I want to do a separate haul video, but there's so much good spring stuff at and other stories. So if you guys are looking for some summer or spring clothing, try and other stories because they had a lot of stuff. Um, so now we are on our way to Target because I need to get a few things. I want to get a blanket for this car, um, you know, just in case, just in case. Um, and then I also want to get like a basket because you guys saw that like <laughs> post office thing that we have in the trunk. Um, I want to get like an actual basket so it just like looks a little bit better because you know I have a Tesla now so we're like we're a little bit elevated you know what I mean so um, I want to get like a nice little basket and then um, Oh, I need to get more mouthwash. Like, I need to get, like, some, uh, like, toiletries and things like that. So, let's go to Target. Is it raining? You guys, this car is so easy to drive compared to the last two gasoline cars that I had. 
Yeah, it's just very easy. I feel a lot safer in an EV than a gasoline car. It just like, it's a lot easier to control. Yeah, like when you accelerate, you have like a lot more control about how, like where your car is going. I don't know how to explain it, but um, yeah, it just, it feels really great. Oh, by the way, I just got these masks from Amazon. These are the Korean masks. These are the KF94, I think they're called. The reason why I got this is because I've been watching a lot of Korean vloggers lately and they all like have these masks. These are the masks that the Korean government gave to the citizens, which, you know, is really great because the US didn't give a shit. But <laughs> I noticed that they were like a lot smaller than the masks that we have here in the US. Um, and it fits my face perfectly because I have a really small face and it just fits my face perfectly. And also it fits the nose really well. Um, when I saw them, when I saw like the Korean vloggers wearing this, I was like, oh, this is going to be so comfortable around the nose. And it was, I got it on Amazon. So, um, if you're interested, I'll leave a link in the description box down below. Oh yeah. Huh. Oh, this one would be good. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid if I get one of these, like if you put bags in, it's going to snag the bag. That's a good one. It's a good thing they have. Yeah, um, for some reason it rained. <laughs> it like rained pretty hard actually. Interesting. This was not in the forecast today. Okay, I'm gonna do a proper haul like in another video, but I wanna show you guys- oh, I'm covering my nipples. <laughs> That's why I look like I'm hugging myself. But um, I just bought these pants from Target. They look so expensive. Look, and they were only $25. It's like the perfect like white cream pants and they fit perfectly okay i have to show you another one real quick so um i don't know if i ever recorded this in the dressing room but um i tried it on like as a dress and it was really nice it was a short dress but it's okay because like if i wear shorts underneath it it's gonna be fine but don't they look so cool with these pants these pants are so versatile you guys have to go to target to get these pants i'll try to find it online and link it in the description box but look this outfit looks expen- well, this shirt was expensive, but these pants were only $25. Come on. Getting ready right now. We're going to go to Malibu today. Um, we're leaving in about an hour and a half. We're gonna catch some golden hour lighting because I need to take a few photos for a sponsored post that I need to do but while I'm there I'm just gonna take some non-sponsored content as well <laughs> um, so I'm just gonna like do my hair a little bit um, I didn't like properly do my hair like there's no product in my hair right now so I'm just gonna curl it <laughs> with like a curling iron. I do that sometimes when I um, don't feel like rewashing my hair. <laughs> I believe this is a quarter inch barrel. Anything larger than this just looks really unnatural on my hair texture. So I have to make sure it's like at least around this size. Oh, by the way, I'm using the Hot Shot Tools curler. I've had this for years and it uh, was not too expensive and it does exactly what I need it to do. Good afternoon, everyone. I am allowing my Tesla to drive today. This is my first time using autopilot. I'm getting used to it. <laughs> I was afraid to use it but now I'm finally doing it because there's traffic so this is exciting it's doing a really good job I'm not doing anything you know what I'm saying uh, a message does pop up sometimes you have to apply slight force to the steering wheel just so the car knows that you are still awake <laughs> because um, I think I think it varies by state but in the state of California um, actually what am I talking about it's in beta it, we're only at like level two autopilot. Um, Self-driving cars are not like autonomous, like completely 100% autonomous yet. So um, you still have to be, you know, conscious of driving. Like you have to be ready to take the wheel like 
at any time. You know what I'm saying? See, it says apply slight turning force. And um, yeah, wow, this is amazing. I'm literally drive. Well, we're going somewhere, but I'm not driving. That's amazing. <laughs> All right. Well, I just wanted to update you guys on um, on the car. What are your thoughts, mom? Tesla. favorite time of the day and then when the sun goes down I'm like mm, time to go to sleep <laughs> you guys look at my look at my camera roll it's all the sunset <laughs> ah what a beautiful day hey y'all so I just took a shower and I figured I'd just like sit down in front of the camera today and give you guys like a little life update like what's been going on in my life like Where's acting? Where's my acting career going? Like, you know, what's going on? But yeah, I'm just like really happy to announce that I am in such a good place in my life right now. Um, as you guys know, I have a history with um, clinical depression and I have a, an anxiety disorder. And eight months ago, I went on antidepressants. And, you know, ever since I've been talking about my experience on antidepressants and I don't regret it one bit. Um, it is the best thing that has ever happened to me. I can't believe that I can live a life That's like not miserable <laughs> Like I can't believe that I can like be a normal person like a normal functioning human being It's amazing. And I can't believe like this little white pill that I take every morning can like change my life like that It's literally it was literally life-changing for me um, you know, obviously I can only speak on my own experience I feel like I always do a disclaimer whenever I talk about antidepressants because everyone's different um, Everyone's brain is, brain is different. Everyone's biochemistry is different. Everyone is just different So what works for me may not work for you, but for me antidepressants has have they literally changed my life for the better and um, I feel like I'm finally in a good place in my life partially because of that but also because I finally feel like I've found some version of balance in my life finally um balance between personal and work my work life um i don't feel as burnt out as i have been in previous years and it took me a really long time to get to this place it took me about like i've been working on it for like the past two or three years it, it took me a really long time to to find some sort of version of balance and a large part of that is because of my antidepressants but because i just i just put the work in and it wasn't easy, it was not easy. I put in a lot of work, there was a lot of healing, there was a lot of crying, there was a lot of burning out, there was, it was just a lot. And I'm so glad that, you know, even though those emotions are negative or, you know, they hurt, you know, I'm so glad that I did it because now I'm in such a better place. Like, I just feel so liberated now knowing that I know when I can and cannot do work and when I can and cannot, you know, do like my personal stuff. I just feel so much more liberated knowing that I have uh, clarity. I don't know if that makes any sense. By the way, I don't know <laughs> if anything that I'm saying in this section of the video is going to make sense because my mind is just working and words are coming out. So just keep that in mind. <laughs> but yeah, I just feel like in, oh, I'm just in a, such a better place. Like I, Back in 2018, it was just a mis- that was- oh, I was so miserable. I like to call 2018 the worst year of my life because it- it was. God, I cannot believe how my life has turned around, like, in just a couple of years. My god. Wow. <laughs> but yeah, antidepressants are really great. It's helping me, um, 
put space between my anxiety and myself so that I'm able to make more rational decisions. Um, it makes me a lot less irritable. Anyone who um, experiences anxiety, I think, can understand um, how irritable you can get and it affects your personal relationships. Um, so my personal relationships with my family and my friends has improved a lot after going on antidepressants because I'm just not as irritable and little small inconveniences in life don't feel like it's the end of the world. <laughs> um, it's difficult to quantify or to explain the ways in which antidepressants help because for me personally, I'm not really good at talking about my feelings, like it's really difficult for me to put my feelings into words. So every time I try to talk about depression or like how antidepressants have helped me, it's it's hard to put into words, but I hope that makes some sort of sense. I feel like I'm truly living a life right now. Before when I was depressed or before I was on antidepressants, I felt like I was just floating through life, like I was just existing and not really living. And now I feel like the complete opposite. And I can't believe that I, like I'm I was able to I can't believe I'm able to feel this way. It's like it's like a miracle for me to feel this way right now. I'm so happy and content with my life right now. I don't feel like I I don't need anything more. I don't want anything more like I have everything that I need. I have loving parents, loving family, loving friends. Like, you know, I love the, the job that I get to do every day. I'm just in a really good place and I, I don't know how else to explain it, but I feel very balanced. I feel very like in harmony with the universe. I feel very liberated from insecurity. Which is another thing that I want to talk about, skin. My skin has been the biggest insecurity probably of my entire life. <laughs> um, I started getting acne, I think, when I was like 13 years old and I just have had it ever since. I'm 27, like I have adult acne. Like I am a full blown adult and I still have skin problems. Um, and I remember when I was at my lowest low back in that year, 2018, every time my skin would look not up to par you know whenever it would look what i thought was bad whenever my skin looked bad i would be so mean to myself i would be so horrible to myself like and for like for what reason <laughs> like okay your skin looks bad so now what like you're just gonna be mean to yourself does that make any sense does that is that gonna help you at all no it doesn't help you at in any way, it actually just makes your situation worse because girl, you're already depressed and you're just like contributing to the cycle girl. So back in 2019, which was um, the time that I decided to start living like or start trying to live, I made the conscious decision to stop being mean to myself because I didn't find it to be pr very productive. And so my thought was like, well, what would happen if I was nice to myself? Like, what would happen if I was just like nice about things that was I was insecure about? <laughs> so now I'm in a place, you know, like my skin's not looking great because I've been wearing a mask. So my mask has been breaking me out. Like I, ne I never get like cystic, cystic acne like this, but it happened because I was wearing a mask. You know, if this was like a couple of years ago, I would have looked at this and I would have been like, Ew, like I would have been so mad at, mad at myself and like mean to myself. But the thing about being mean to yourself when you're not feeling good about yourself, when you're already not feeling good about yourself is the circumstances don't change. Like even if I was mean to myself about my skin, my skin is still gonna look this way. Like being mean to myself isn't going to make my skin better. <laughs> so why not just be nice to myself? Why not be like, oh, you know what? My skin is looking like this today. It might look completely different tomorrow. Skin is always changing. It's an organ. Uh, it's your skin's, it's your body's largest organ. And it protects your, it protects your body. It protects your inner organs. It, it's a, uh, skin is a protectant. It's your protector. Why would you be mean to it? <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. And I don't even know if I'm making sense, but um, I just feel so liberated after making the conscious decision to be nice to myself instead of being mean to myself. 
I, f I feel like I'm in a much better place because of that as well. So antidepressants and not being mean to myself, those two things have contributed so much to the way that I'm feeling right now. Completely unrelated point. Um, as you guys saw in the beginning of the vlog, I got my dream car. <laughs> I got my Tesla. I never would have thought in a million years that this would actually be possible. And it's because of you guys. So I just wanted to thank you guys so much for for being here and like joining me on this journey and you know allowing me to freely talk about stuff that is like really scary to talk about like talking about antidepressants and depression and anxiety I just want to thank you guys so much for giving me the space and the platform to do that um, because you know you guys allowing me to do that has helped so many other people who have seen my videos or like have consumed the type of content that I create. So I just wanted to thank you guys so much for um, continuously allowing me the platform to talk about really important things that are important to me. Um, things that I think would make the world a better place. Um, but yeah, I got I got my dream car last week. And what's funny is my, my brother also got his dream car. We both have Teslas. And um, my brother and I, when we were younger, when we were teenagers, we were little shitheads. We were not the people that we are right now. I'll tell you that. So my brother got held back a couple of years. He didn't graduate high school until um, he was 20 years old. And he had really huge like behavioral issues, so much to the point that my mom had to send him to the Philippines to be corrected. <laughs> um, and for me, like I was a little shithead in high school too. I didn't take school seriously at all. I got my four year university admission revoked. Like I couldn't go to the university that I was ex that was previously accepted to. They revoked my admission <laughs> because I got a D plus in math. Um, and then I went to community college and then I dropped out and I was so lost when that happened. I didn't know what I was gonna do, but you know, regardless of like, my brother's past or my past, we found ourselves in pretty lucrative careers and we're doing really well and we're doing work that we love. We have really great relationships with each other. We have really great relationships with our families. Like we're just in like really great places right now. And the reason why I wanted to share that was because I wanted to emphasize how your past does not define who you are or who you can be, you know, my brother and I were little shitheads when we were teenagers and, you know, my brother is one of my heroes. He's one of my role models. I admire him so much because he had like a 1.3 GPA in high school and like I said, he didn't graduate until he was like 20 and he was super lost when he was younger and he really just picked himself up, you know, not to play into the pull yourself up by the bootstraps, um, but he literally did that. He stopped feeling sorry for himself. He stopped pitying himself and he decided like, I'm not going to let my past self determine who I'm capable of being. And he worked really hard through community college. He went to two year college and then he got accepted to a really great four year university. And now he's a software engineer at a really, really great job. He loves his job so much. And I think that's, what's most important. <laughs> um, I think that's what's most important here is like finding something that you love doing for a living. I admire my brother so much. I remember when I, I remember the day that I got my admission revoked, I was like super sad. I was like depressed even, like I wouldn't leave my bedroom. Like I was like really, really depressed about it. And I remember my brother came over and he saw the state that I was in. And this is the best advice that anyone has ever given to me. He literally looked at me and he was like, stop pitying yourself. Like just those three words kind of like changed my life around. Cause I was like, yeah, that's, that's true. Like, why am I pitying myself? My situation isn't getting any better by feeling sorry for myself or pitying myself. Like, What's the next step? What am I going to do next? You know what I mean? And so I 
um, went and registered at a community college and I realized that I actually hated it there. I realized by going to college that I didn't want to go to college. <laughs> So I don't regret my time there. I don't regret dropping out. I really needed to go to college to realize that it wasn't for me, that college wasn't for me. Um, and when I dropped out of college, it, I kind of felt like a failure. You know, I have a whole video about talking about this like that I made like three or four years ago. But um, I felt like a failure because I was lost and I felt like, you know, going to college is the only thing that people around me were supposed to do. My mom went to college, my dad went to college, my dad has like four master's degrees. So like going to college was absolutely part of the program for me. <laughs> um, so when I dropped out, I felt like kind of a failure. And also because I dropped out to become an actor, like no one believed in me, really. People were like, oh, you're like, you wanna be an actor? Like, mm, okay, whatever. But I knew like, you know, I'm also kind of proud of my younger self because I cannot believe that young baby Asia had the audacity to drop out of college and pursue something that she was passionate about. Like, I can't believe she had the audacity to do that. Because of her, I am where I am now. I'm doing a career that I'm so thankful for, I'm so grateful for, and something that totally aligns with my purpose. Because of her, because she had the audacity to say, you know what, I'm not gonna take the traditional route. I'm going to go into an unconventional career. And because she overcame her fears, she became me. And I'm not gonna say that it was easy to get here. <laughs> Nothing good comes easy, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, I just wanted to tell you guys that story of my brother and I because I really want to emphasize that your past does not define who you are or who you can be. If you want to change your life around, you have the power to do it. You can absolutely do it. You just have to make the decision to do it. No one's gonna make that decision for you. If you want to become a better person, if you wanna to change to become a better person, you can do that. If you want to change your career to something that you're more passionate about, you can do that. If you have any goal, you can achieve it. It's not gonna be easy. No one said that shit's gonna be easy, but if you want to do it, then you're gonna put your all into doing it and then you're gonna do it. My brother did it, I did it, and I don't know. Your past does not define you. Anyway, I don't know if any of that made sense. <laughs> like I said, my brain was just going and words were coming out. So hopefully that made some sort of sense. I didn't mean for this to be like some sort of like motivational video, but those are just things like the thoughts that were going through my mind lately as I'm, you know, kind of reflecting on how my life was versus how it is now and, you know, how Happy, like how truly happy I am right now, how happy I am with my life, with my relationships, with my family, with my friends and my career and yeah. Oh, another thing, a lot of people have been asking where like, where's the acting career going? I'm still auditioning. I've been auditioning for a lot of great things. I t um, got a couple of callbacks for really great projects. I didn't book them, but it's totally fine because um, those are casting directors that have been calling me in for years. So it's really cool to you know keep building those relationships. And there's a really exciting project that I was offered that I can't talk about right now, but I'm super excited about it. And oh my gosh, I'm working on a clothing collaboration with an incredible brand. There's just so many things in the works right now that I'm so grateful for. And I love it because I feel like I'm responsibly booked. You know, I'm not booked and busy, I'm responsibly booked. I still have time for leisure and relaxation. I can still rest. You know, it's all about balance. And I cannot believe that I've actually found some sort of version of balance in my life right now. This is unbelievable. I can't believe, <laughs> I'm still in disbelief that like I'm not miserable. Thanks antidepressants. Anyway, I'm gonna end this vlog here. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to whatever this was. <laughs> I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.